This video is about using complex numbers to derive trigonometric identities in the form of either sine to the power n or cos to the power n. Obviously we know that sine squared is 1 minus cos squared and we know that cos squared is 1 minus sine squared but what about if it was sine cubed or sine to the power 5 or sine theta to the power 9? What about those powers? So before we get into the way of proving those identities, there's a couple of standard results that we need to have a look at. And that's these. If z is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta, then z plus 1 over z will simplify just to be 2 cos theta. And z minus 1 over z would simplify to be 2i sine theta. If we have powers, if it's z to the power n plus 1 over z to the power n, then we just have 2 cos n theta. And finally, z to the power n minus 1 over z to the power n will be 2i sine n theta. So there's some standard results that we're going to be needing to use in this video to prove these trigonometric identities. Um, first of all, I just want to show you where these results come from. So if z is equal to cos theta plus i sine theta, then I could say that 1 over z, well, I could write that as being z to the power minus 1. So cos theta plus i sine theta to the power minus 1. Then using de Moivre's theorem, I'm just going to times the arguments by minus 1. So cos theta will become cos minus theta. And sine theta becomes sine minus theta. And we know that cos minus theta is just the same thing as cos theta. And sine minus theta is the same thing as minus sine theta. So if z is cos theta plus i sine theta, then 1 over z is cos theta minus i sine theta. So, if I want to do z plus 1 over z, if I'm going to add these two things together, I've got my z, which is my cos theta plus i sine theta, plus 1 over z, and you can see that the i sine theta and the minus i sine theta cancel out, the cos theta plus cos theta is 2 cos theta. So therefore my z plus 1 over z is equal to 2 cos theta. That's the first standard result that we saw. If I were to take those away, so z minus 1 over z, here's my z, minus 1 over z, and we can see here that the cos theta minus cos theta, they cancel out. The i sine theta minus minus i sine theta will become i sine theta plus i sine theta, so 2i sine theta. So that's the second standard result that we saw. Now the two results with powers. So, if z to the power n, so if z is cos theta plus i sine theta, then cos theta plus i sine theta to the power n, by de Moivre's theorem, will be cos n theta plus sine n theta. Just multiplying the arguments by n. Similarly, if I have 1 over z to the power n, then I could write that as being z to the power minus n. So z to the power minus n. Using de Moivre's theorem, multiply the argument by minus n. Multiply the argument by minus n. And then we know that cos of, n, uh, cos of minus n theta will just be cos n theta. Sine of minus n theta will be minus sine n theta. 
So we've got our z to the power n, our z to the uh, our one over z to the power n. <clears throat> so adding those two results together, the z to the power n plus one over z to the power n. The signs cancel out, and we get two cos n theta. Subtracting those two results, our z minus one sorry our z to the power n minus one over z to the power n. The causes cancel out, and we get two i sine n theta. So that is how we can prove these results. Or, in um, so that's that's it um, for this video in terms of those results. We don't need to um, go any further. So that's the key thing for this video, knowing these results, and we're going to see how to use them in a minute. But just while we're on the topic of these results, in a future video, these other results will be useful. So if I was to think of these results in exponential form, so instead of writing z equals cos theta plus i sine theta, if I'm thinking of z as being equal to e to the power i, the, i theta, then my z to the power n, my e to the i theta to the power n would be e to the i n theta. The 1 over z to the power n would be e to the minus i n theta. So this line here is the same as this, but just in exponential form. This line here is exactly the same as this, but in exponential form. These two results that I've just written here, so this result and this result here will be very useful in a later video when we want to replace this with this. Anyway, like I say, the important thing for now is those results at the top there, but just also remember these other results for future video. Okay, so let's talk about these um, trigonometric identity proofs. If I want, um, so I'm just going to talk about the process here. If I want to find cos to the power n, because it's cos, I'm going to select z plus 1 over z, because I know I can replace that with the 2 cos theta. We just saw a moment ago that this is the same thing as this. So that's why I'm going to consider the z plus 1 over z if I want a cos. And I'm going to consider that in two separate ways. The first way is by replacing it with the 2 cos theta. The second way is I'm going to expand this out with the binomial theorem. I am also going to use the fact that z to the power n plus 1 over z to the power n can be replaced with 2 cos n theta. And then using these three results together, I will be able to get my identity that I need to prove. If I need to find a sine identity, it will be exactly the same process, but instead of doing z plus 1 over z, I'll do z minus 1 over z. That's a good thing, because I know that's going to give me this. So, that is your process. Let's look at a couple of examples. We'll do one of each where we're actually using, uh, well, we'll do the full process. So, this first question. The first example asks me to express cos theta to the power 5 in the form of a cos 5 theta plus b cos 3 theta plus c cos theta, where a, b and c are constants. So that's the question I want to do. So, because it's cos theta to the power 5, I'm going to consider z plus 1 over z. I'm doing that because I know it's the cos that I need to find. And I know that z plus 1 over z is equal to 2 cos theta. 
power 5 because it's the cos theta to the power 5. So considering z plus 1 over z to the power 5, I'm going to replace that with 2 cos theta to the power 5. 2 to the power 5 is 32. And the cos theta to the power 5 is cos theta to the power 5. <clears throat> Next, I'm going to consider the z plus 1 over z to the power 5 in terms of the binomial theorem. So I'm going to expand that out. So, let's go through this. The first term here, that's my 5c0, z to the power 5, 1 over z to the power 0. Then I have 5c1, z to the power 4, 1 over z to the power 1. 5c2, z to the power 3, times 1 over z to the power 2. 5c3, z to the power 2, times 1 over z to the power 3. 5c4, z to the power 1, times 1 over z to the power 4. And plus the last term, 5c5, times z to the power 0, times 1 over z to the power 5. Now just replacing each of those coefficients, the 5c1 is 5, the 5c2 is 10, the 5c3 is 10, the 5c4 is 5, like that. Then, simplifying each of these terms, the z to the power 4 times 1 over z is z to the power 3. The z cubed times 1 over z squared is z. The z squared times 1 over z cubed would be 1 over z. The z times 1 over z to the power 4 would be 1 over z cubed. And then we have the 1 over z to the power 5 on the end there. Next, what I'm going to do is I'm going to group up similar sorts of powers. So I'm going to group up the z to the power 5 with the 1 over z to the power 5. And I'm going to group up the 5 lots of z cubed and the 5 lots of z over, uh, sorry, the 5 lots of um, 1 over z cubed. And then the 10 lots of z and the 10 lots of 1 over z. which is a good thing for me to do, because now I can use this standard result that we saw a few moments ago. That z to the power n plus 1 over z to the power n is the same as two lots of cos n theta. So in this first case, n is 5. So this will be replaced with two lots of cos 5 theta. n is 5. So we have 5 theta. In the next case, n is 3. <clears throat> so I will have a 3 theta. And then the final case, n is 1. So I'll have a 1 theta. So, let's, th let's go back to what we've done now then. I have shown that the z plus 1 over z to the power 5 can be written as 32 lots of cos theta to the power 5 because I, I got that by just replacing the z plus 1 over z with the 2 cos theta. And then just a moment ago, by expanding this out with the binomial theorem, I got this. So they must both be equal to one another. They both came from the same place. The 32 cos theta to the power 5 came from this. The 2 cos 5 theta plus 10 
uh, cos 3 theta plus 20 cos theta came from this. So therefore, they must both be equal to one another. All I'm going to do now is divide both sides by 32. And that is the identity that I needed to prove. So let me just repeat what I've done there with that process. Because I had, because I wanted to do cos five, uh, cos theta to the power five, I considered z plus one over z to the power five. I replaced the two cos uh, the what the the z plus one over z with the two cos theta, and then I expanded that out to get the thirty two cos theta to the power five. I ex I also considered the z plus 1 over z to the power 5, and I expanded that out with a binomial theorem. I grouped up similar terms together so that I could use this result, and then I made these two things equal to one another. Okay, let's do another example. This question is a two-part question. Part A says to express sine theta to the power 4, in the form of d cos 4 theta plus e cos 2 theta plus f, where d, e and f are constants. And then part b says, hence, find the exact value of the integral of that from 0 to 2 prime. OK, so if part a, first of all, because it's sine theta to the power 4, because it's a sine, I'm going to consider z minus 1 over z because I know that z minus 1 over z is the same thing as 2i sine theta. So it's going to give me the sine. And I'm going to do power 4 because I want a power 4. So z minus 1 over z to the power 4, replacing the z minus 1 over z with the 2i sine theta. Expanding that out then, so the 2 to the power 4 is 16. The i to the power 4 is i to the power 4. The sine theta to the power 4 is sine theta to the power 4. The i to the power 4, I know that's the same thing as 1. So 16 times 1 times sine theta to the power 4 is that. So I know that this is equal to this. Next, I'm going to consider this with the binomial theorem. <coughs> Excuse me. So the z plus 1 over z to the power, sorry, the z minus 1 over z to the power 4. So I've got 4c0, z to the power 4 times minus 1 over z to the power 0. Then 4c1 times z cubed times minus 1 over z to the power 1. 4c2, z squared times minus 1 over z squared. 4c3 times z to the power 1 times minus 1 over z to the power 3. And then 4c4 times z to the power 0 times minus 1 over z to the power 4. 4c1 is 4. 4c2 is 6. 4c3 is 4. Then, <coughs> excuse me, uh, then I've got the z cubed times minus 1 over z. So that's going to give minus z squared. Minus z squared. z squared times 1 over z squared will just be 1. So this will all simplify just to be 6. z times minus 1 over z cubed will be minus 1 over z squared. And then we have the z to the power 4. Next, I'm grouping up the like terms together, the similar terms together, I should say, rather. The z to the power 4 plus the 1 over z to the power 4. Then we have the minus 4z squared and the minus 4 over z squared. 
So that gives me the minus four lots of the z squared over plus one over z squared. And then we have the six by itself on the end there. Then using this standard result here, the first case when n is four, so that will get replaced with two cos four theta. Here, n is two, so that's gonna get replaced with two cos two theta. And so now we've shown that z minus one over z to the power four can be written as two cos four theta minus eight cos two theta plus six. So we have considered the z minus one over z to the power four in two ways. The first way we got 16 sine theta to the power four. The second way we got two cos four theta minus eight cos two theta plus six. So they must both be equal to one another. Dividing both sides by 16 gives the standard result, sorry, not the standard result, gives the identity that we were trying to prove. So that is part A of the question, Dan. Part B said to hence find this integral. So instead of integrating the sine to the power 4, I'm going to use the result from part A, which was this. Which is much easier to integrate because we can integrate each of these terms individually. So the cos here is going to integrate to be sine but I'm going to need to divide by 4 by the reverse chain rule. So the 1 8th becomes 1 over 32, sine to the power 4. The cos is going to integrate to be sine, but I'm going to have to divide by 2 by the reverse chain rule. So the 1 half at the front becomes 1 quarter. And then the 3 eighths will integrate to be 3 eighths theta. Next, I'm substituting the pi over 2 in, into the theta here to give 2 theta, into the theta here to get, sorry, to give 2 pi, into the theta here to get pi, and into the uh, theta here. Then, substituting the 0 in, each of the terms will be 0 when I substitute 0 in. So substituting 0 in here will be 0. Substituting 0 in here will give me a 0, and substituting 0 in here will give me a 0. So I'm taking away 0. Sine of 2 pi is 0. Sine of pi is 0. So we're just left with the 3 eighths of pi over 2, which is the 3 pi over 16. And so that is the answer. So there we go. That is how we can prove identities for either cos theta to the power n or sine theta to the power n. We consider either z plus 1 over n for cos, sorry, z plus 1 over z for cos, or z minus 1 over z for sine. We replace it. If it's a z plus 1 over z, we replace that with 2 cos theta. If it's the z minus 1 over z, we replace that with 2i sine theta. We expand it. We consider the same z plus 1 over z or z minus 1 over z, and we expand it with the binomial theorem. We group up those like terms, so we're able to use the 2 cos n theta identity. And then we make our two answers equal to one another.